Hi, I'm Catherine Keating for Bill About TV. The charming boy from Burke, James Houston, has photographed some of the world's most beautiful people, including Elle McPherson and Hugh Jackman. And we're here in Soho, New York, outside his studio, to talk to James about his work and his upcoming documentary, Let's Talk About Sex. The New York photography scene is extremely competitive, but James Houston has managed to stand out and be successful. Well, I think one of the biggest challenges you face moving to New York is that you're really coming from you know, a relatively small town to a big city and it's, it's such a huge industry here and you really have to be prepared. The people that come here to New York, they really are the best in their field and they're coming here to really, you know, to really see how far they can take it and it's, it's very competitive obviously mm -hmm. and there's a lot of people here trying to do the same thing so you really have to be very um, clear in terms of what's your thing, you know, what is your focus and I think one of the things in Australia is you tend to become more of a jack of all trades. Yeah. You know, you can do you do a bit of this, you do a bit of this, you do a bit of this. So when you come to America, the first thing they ask you is, well, what's your thing? What's your specialty? Mm -hmm. And then ironically enough, when you become successful um, in your area of you know specialization, then you then you're able to diversify. Yeah, and you're renowned now for photographing nude bodies and, and the naked form. Yeah, I guess I am. It sounds kind of strange. Through the work that I was doing in Australia, I got a reputation for my body work. I shot a lot of athletes and celebrities you know, in the nude. I shot the, the official calendar for the Olympic Games mm -hmm. uh, for the year 2000 with us in Australia. And you know, those sort of things have really helped propel my, I guess, my name along in Australia. And, um, and then when I sort of came here, the books were what people were really interested in. I shot another book called Raw Moves that was um, basically the Australian ballet, the Sydney Dance Company in their Bangara. Um, the Australian dance companies and shot that book and that book really landed me um, working for Donna Karen when I came here. So, um, you know, I've always believed that working on, on the side projects, which is your own personal, ex you know, um, expression through that work is important for any artist. In addition to his accomplished commercial career, James Houston has a long-standing commitment to social causes. His Move for AIDS project was launched in Sydney, New York and London in 2006 and raised over half a million dollars for the fight against HIV AIDS. So, you know, those projects really have led me to also believe as an artist it's important to really have the balance between your commercial work and also trying to make a difference in the community. Um, and the, the, the MOVE project, which was really successful, but also coming to America, you sort of see that there's a lot of crazy things in this country that, you know, you notice coming from an outsider's perspective. And the MOVE project, um, you know, being around HIV AIDS, I noticed how, how much it affected young people. And then looking at the, the, um, the rates for teen pregnancy and STDs with young people, I was so shocked to find that like one in three US teenage girls gets pregnant. And so knowing how bad the facts were around adolescent sexual health in America, I was really inspired to go out and make a film. And it's an amazing process working on a documentary film because there really is no script. You're really following your instinct and working also with something like sex and teenagers, it's very challenging sometimes, you know, because parents in the community aren't willing to step up and educate young people about sex. Um, young people are turning to porn. And as uh, you know, porn is, as we know, is made by men, funded by men for men, so it's not really a good thing to be really putting out there, especially to young girls, as being, you know, the norm for what sexuality really is about. Give it to me now. Give it to me now. College means sex. Well, College means also, girls put out. People are in denial. Teachers, parents, they're like, no, no, teenagers aren't having sex. They can't or they shouldn't. But we do and we are. It's like we are a nation that is just culturally disabled about this subject. What about Australia? Um, you know, Australia is a lot better than the US, but they're a lot worse than the Netherlands, you know, and Western Europe. You know, as soon as I heard that Fred Niles was trying to, like, ban topless sunbacking on Bondo Beach, I'm like, that's the beginning of the end. I'm a photographer that shoots, you know, a lot of skin, a lot of bodies, a lot of very sexy imagery, Victoria's Secrets, all that sort of stuff is what I do for my own job. So, you know, I guess thinking about, you know, I'm contributing to the sexualized, you know, society. Like America is the sexiest nation on earth that can't talk about sex, but I'm part of the contribution to that sexualized, you know, media world. And I guess in some ways I'm offsetting my sexual impact by making a film about it, you know. Uh, I did a, um, a viral stunt where we dropped a huge condom on the Washington Monument from a helicopter. And it's on the side of it said, um, every day 10,000 US teens catch an STD, let's talk about sex. And that was really a viral campaign that went out. It was really just a, a viral stunt. You really sort of, you know, wake up America and start them talking about the issue. It launched in, in you know, 
basically with the film and it went out there to sort of just again try and get some more publicity towards the film. Team Credency costs taxpayers nine billion dollars a year in this country. That's insane. Exactly. A condom's cheap. A conversation's free. Exactly. You know? Good words of So advice. start talking about sex. So what do you miss about home? I think there is something said for Australians in terms of, you know, um, working to live. Americans do tend to, you know, to live to work. And what Australians have is such a great connection to, um, you know, what's real and yeah. what's really important. The environment, family, you know, a beer and, a, 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 and some fish and chips and just a great sunny day. What advice do you have for Australians who might want to follow in your footsteps? The reality is New York is not easy, it's bloody tough. There's tough seasons, it's a tough town, it's tough to get a break here, it's tough to work through it. But I think Australians are really good at just getting out there and just, you know, throwing their hat in the ring and just trying something and learning along the way. Exactly. You know? and, and you're the, the great example. You've had a wonderful career here and it's been diversified and unpredictable, but so worthwhile. Yeah, thank you.